to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace and mercy and blessings that in these nights in these days Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the tawfiq the ability to do dhikr to remember him this month that we are passing through is a very great month the month of Shaban and for this reason, well, one reason is that it is a month full of baraka. It's close to the month of blessings. And the other point with regards to Shaban, which causes it to be full of baraka and blessings itself, is that Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with regards to Shaban, did a dua for the blessings of Shaban. And if Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did a dua for barakah in a month, Allah make this month a month of blessings for us, in other words, Shaban, then how much barakah there must be in this month? Let's think about it, how much Allah Ta'ala's mercies must be descending, the nights and the days, how the nights must be great. And such great moments and nights and days and morning and evening, if in these moments Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah gives us the tawfiq to do such an amal, such an action, that compared to that action, in terms of reward that Allah Ta'ala has kept for that action, there is no other action that can compare. There is no other action that can compare. So quickly is that action accepted. Allah Ta'ala very quickly gives the reward for that action. And reward, Allah Ta'ala states, Allah mentions that when my servant remembers me, does my dhikr, then I also do his dhikr. I remember him. Subhanallah. Now the mashaykh, the pious elders have said that after getting this reward, what other reward do we need to attain? Is there any other reward after this reward? The Allah Ta'ala, our Rabb says, I remember you. And then after this reward, is there any need for any other reward? Do we need to attain any more rewards to remember Allah, to remember our Creator? It's like this, that, for example, if we think that there is a king of a certain land, of a nation, of a country, then he focuses on one individual. One individual. Obviously, when the king focuses on that individual, or gives him his grace, or makes him closer to him, or loves him, gives him status, then all the subordinates of the king who work for the king, the ministers who depend on the king, or who live in that land, that country, they'll all start to become sidekicks of that individual, won't they? Of course, they say, oh, the king, he likes this person. He's close to the king. Everybody will shake that man's hand and say salam to him and want to know him and be a contact of that person. Why? Because the king likes this person. Allahu Akbar. So if Allah remembers his servant, then Allah is khaliqi hakiki, the true Lord, the master. And one ant which is crawling on the ground also knows that man that Allah Ta'ala likes and that Allah Ta'ala remembers. How can it not know that person? How can it not know? Is this ant not the creation of Allah? That ant... The spider, even that insect knows a bird that's flying in the heavens, in the skies, knows that man who Allah Ta'ala remembers. A small, small, minute, millimeter long spider recognizes that human being who Allah Ta'ala is remembering. And, and because Allah Ta'ala is remembering that person, so all makhluk, all of creation, whatever status they're on an understanding, according to their qualities and attributes and ability, they also remember that person that Allah Ta'ala is remembering. The earth 
every corner of the earth, east, west, north, south, remembers that man. How? Because all the baraka, they, the earth, it brings out all of the baraka for that person. It spreads all of the barakat in the world due to that individual. And water, how does water remember that person? Allah. Does water also remember that person who's doing your thicker and that you're remembering him in turn? Does water remember that person? The winds, the skies, the clouds, the leaves on the trees, they remember that dhakir. Rather, if you take a tree, a piece, a fruit hanging off a branch of a tree makes a request, Oh Allah, please allow this man to devour me, to eat me. They will become the sidekicks of that man, the dhakir, or that woman. One one chicken, let's take a hen, a chicken does dua, the, oh Allah, please allow me to become the food, the khuraq for this man, so he eats my leg, my wing, and my, uh, my feathers are taken off, etc. Is happy that animal, that piece of creation is, think, look, think in your minds for a moment here, ajeeb points can come to your mind, but this is a big reality, this reality that I am explaining. Such a big thing is this action to remember Allah that the whole of the universe and creation starts to like and prefer that human being who remembers Allah. But our nafs, our desires and shaitan and dunya have made it so hard for us to remember Allah to get this road that there are just a few people who Allah Ta'ala likes and prefers. And Allah Ta'ala sometimes, for example, poor soul, who if Allah Ta'ala brings a person or drags a person towards dhikr, then sometimes it's in his destiny that shaitan and nafs, they overwhelm him. So oh, run away from here, leave this gathering, be gone from here. And the biggest loser... You can say, or wretched person is that person that Allah Ta'ala gives him the tawfiq to do dhikr, or Allah Ta'ala sends him to the company of his wali, and then that person discards that company, or practice and leaves it. Then consider really that he is surrounded or she is surrounded by shaitan and jinn and nafs. They've surrounded him or her. So for such an individual, we should do special dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that individual should understand that there's no greater action than Allah ta'ala's dhikr. And my heart is leaving dhikr, or not happy to do dhikr, or I want to run away from Allah ta'ala's remembrance, or I think I've got difficulties due to dhikr, or wasawis, or waswasa, or some people start shaking. Some people start shaking, do you know? Due to doing dhikr. They say, no, 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 I don't feel like doing dhikr. I feel upset mentally and spiritually. I'm not stable. Imagine. Imagine, so what does Allah Ta'ala say? That Allah says, when you remember me, I remember you. The universe remembers you. Rahmah descends to you. The, the birds remember you. The animals remember you. They praise you. The fish praise you. The leaves praise you. The winds praise you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers you also. Subhanallah. And according to their status, now how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember the human being, the dhakir who's remembering Allah? Allah ta'ala says, I give my favor special to that human being. Allah says, I remember you in such a way that I've forgiven you. I've forgiven you. فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِ وَلَا تَكُمْ so in such a time, in a month of blessings, Allah has given us His fadl, His karam, His mercy. Everything is based on Allah's fadl. That Allah gives the tawfiq to us to come and sit in His dhikr. My brothers, this is a big wealth. We will realize in Qiyamah, on the day of Hashr, that how we used to arrive to dhikr, how we would sit in dhikr Allah. Allah, how you have delivered us to this gathering, to this majlis, how you made us do this action. How we recited your name, remembered your name. You made us capable of remembering you, reciting your name. And when we used to remember your name and do your dhikr and sit in the majlis, we used to feel good and we used to feel peace. Allah, we didn't even know that there was such a big reward given for remembering you. We weren't even aware. We didn't recognize this or realize this. So especially in Shaban, a person should understand that we are taking the treasures that Allah Ta'ala has given to us. We're sitting and taking the treasures in Shaban. In this month. So dhikr my brothers. Allah Ta'ala's remembrance. In the quran Hakim, Wherever Allah Ta'ala has ordered us to remember him. To do his dhikr. Alongside that Allah Ta'ala has used the word kathira. Abundance. Quantity. That do my dhikr in abundance. In high quantity. Remember me but how? In high quantity. Now. There's a condition so that Allah Ta'ala is attached to his remembrance here. Allah Ta'ala has attached a condition that don't just remember me, rather how should you remember me? In abundance, kathiran kathira. Subhanallah. Allah's mercy. That Allah Ta'ala says that if you're not going to eat the halwa, you have to finish and 
eat all of the halwa that's on the plate. You know these gulab jamun, these sweets, you're not going to eat two or three, you have to empty the plate, then leave this. These ras you have to eat all of them. Allah says, no, not a little bit of dhikr, rather abundance of dhikr. Abundance of dhikr, subhanallah. Beautiful. Allah's given dawah, invitation, Allah's put, giving us His favor, His karam, and then letting us do His dhikr. And on top of that, Allah says, no, 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 in abundance you have to remember. In abundance. Now how many people remember Allah in abundance? Okay, yes, we do dhikr. But who does dhikr in abundance? Kathiran kathira. Who? Who does this? Tell me. Yes, we don't have the desire. We run away from dhikr. We don't have the taste for dhikr. We don't have the passion. So how will we bring kathiran kathira? Some people say, I do dhikr in the morning, this many this be, in the evening, this many this be. I've done dhikr. No, but that's not kathiran kathira. That's not abundance of dhikr. Or if you do, do 10,000 or 50,000, Allah Ta'ala says, this is not kathir and kathira. If Allah Ta'ala has said that do my dhikr in abundance, then Allah must have prepared a method so we can do it in abundance, isn't it? Otherwise, Allah Ta'ala can give us a lot of quantity. For example, 5 rakah, 4 rakah, 3 rakah, 2. These are faraid. Yeah? Salah. Subhanallah. That salah, Allah Ta'ala has put a limit. There's no bigger ibadah than this, is there? Salah. So if Allah Ta'ala says 3, sal- three rakah, not 4, how much did we just pray now at Maghrib? Did anybody pray? Anybody pray four rakah? No. Can anybody? Oh, now I'll get more stawab if I do four rakah. No. No. That if you pray even twenty rakahs, but the thawab is in three. If you pray twenty rakah, it is sin. Allah Taala will be unhappy. Subhanallah. So Allah Pak has given the set limitations for ibadat. But here there's hikmah. That in the morning, how many rakahs are there? Fajr two. Why? Why? I've come to the masjid, oh, two rakah is not enough. I want to remember you more, I want to pray more. I'll pray 12 rakah for fajr. No, we cannot pray. Isha, there's four rakah, this many total units. Oh no, I want to do a shortcut, I want to pray less. No. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He's put a limit on salah and the number of rakah units to pray, then Allah ta'ala could have put a limit on dhikr. Allah ta'ala could have not said kathir and kathir. Allah could have said do 10,000 or do 5,000 repetitions of my name or 3,000 in your heart. So here we learn that Allah Ta'ala has attached no limit to his dhikr. Allah Ta'ala said, Kathiran kathira. So have we paid attention, O oh, you Zakirin brothers? Oh we, have we thought about this point? When we ask someone, Oh I did 120 this be in the morning, or I did this this be in the evening, this is what we say, isn't it? This is sad. How sad? Allah Ta'ala says, What? Do dhikr kathir. And I account the tasbihs and the beads and the quantity and the number. So is this kathir? No. So what is kathir? Kathir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for kathir. And Allah ta'ala said it, so obviously he's prepared for it. So kathir dhikr, what is kathir dhikr? That it doesn't stop. Subhanallah, say subhanallah. That when does it stop? At the time of death. Aha, Allahu Akbar. So this is one point. This is one angle you could think. Allah ta'ala says kathir, abundance, remember me in high quantity. Do dhikr in that way that it never stops since you were born until you pass away. What should you do? My dhikr continuous. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala, how do I do this? How do I remember you? Um, that if I don't pass away until I don't pass away, I remember you from the time of birth till, I, till the time I pass away. Yes, Allah says, this is kathir. Kathir. And don't stop. And don't stop for a second. That dhikr shouldn't stop for a second. And that's when you can be included in those people, with those people who did dhikr kathir and kathir. So Allah, how do I do this? Allah Ta'ala has then guided us. Method. As Aisha Sadiqa radiyallahu anha stated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kula aini, yadhkru la kula aini. That the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated every second, every moment he was remembering Allah. Huh? But he used to sit with you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to speak to you, Hazrat Aisha, and he used to play. And Hazrat Aisha Sadiqa, radiallahu anha, she used to also see, he used to, for example, they used to play, and um, that he explained the events and the stories, Sahih Bukhari Hadith, that Rasulullah sallam used to speak with his wife, and they used to joke, and she used to sit with him, and, and she also said that he always did the dhikr of Allah. So obviously she's speaking the truth, and also she's telling us all the truthful events that happen when they were in each other's company. 
So then we ask Hazrat Aisha, how can it be you're saying that the Prophet ﷺ always did dhikr, but at the same time he used to speak to you, discuss with you, there used to be jokes and a little bit of playing and passing the time together and relaxing. And Hazrat Aisha said, yes, Rasulullah ﷺ used to be with us, but his heart was with Allah. He was with us physically, but his heart was with Allah. And this is called dhikr kathira. A person lives in the dunya, fine, he works, sit with the wife and the children, runs his shop and business and taxi. But his heart is where? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Focused on Allah Remembering Allah This is called dhikr kathira Allah ta'ala has given us A method, framework That you should never be negligent of my remembrance At any moment Not a second should pass Not a moment should pass That you are not remembering me Why? Because tell me one second Where the heart is not beating Allah ta'ala says Tell me one second. If the heart is not beating, a person passes away, isn't it? So there's no minute, no second that the heart is not doing tick, 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 beat, beat, beat. Physically, the system is running that every drop of blood passes through the valves of the heart. So if the drops of blood pass through the valves of the heart, so if the heart is beating, Allah, Allah, then every droplet of blood will come out of the heart saying Allah and be distributed across the body. Through the veins and through the body. Every drop of blood. And they will go into the liver, into the kidneys, into the fl- into all the parts of the body. Allah, Allah, Allah. It will distribute the name of Allah throughout the body. Allahu Akbar. So this occurs at that time when a person does what? Does the dhikr of Allah, not from his lips, mouth, not from his hands, not from his tongue. With what? With his heart or her heart. Understood? Naqshbandi silsila, the teachings of the Naqshbandi sheikhs. The Naqshbandi series of teachers back to the Prophet ﷺ, they teach the Salik, the person who is the student, and that person is successful, the student, when he has two principles. Remember these two principles. There are two terms in the Naqshbandi teachings. If a person doesn't attain these two principles or follow these two principles, then he cannot be successful in the Naqshbandi teachings of doing dhikr. Number one, principle number one, is وقوف قلبي. What is it? What's this one? The meaning of uqoof qalbi is that every moment the heart, every moment the heart, a person is focusing towards his heart, then my heart is saying, Allah, 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 Allah. And if we don't get to this position, a salik doesn't reach this position, then he's not successful. He's not successful. To get to this position, person should have such a strong connection with his heart or her heart that not a second should pass where the person is not focusing on the heart that my heart is saying Allah, Allah, Allah. And there shouldn't be a second person where the heart doesn't remember Allah. This is the first principle in Naqshbandi says, uqoof qalbi. That that person's heart always, every moment is remembering Allah. This is kathir dhikr. The person's focusing on the heart. And this happens, it's not hard, alhamdulillah, it's not hard. It's not difficult. If morning and evening you do tasbih, and you do dhikr of Allah. After that, all day long, what do you need to do? Focus on your heart. Whatever you're doing, your thoughts go away into the dunya. Then straight away, go back to your heart. And secondly, to protect, to look after. These are the terms of the next one. Print that your heart, that you watch your heart. You guard your heart. You protect your heart. That no thought other than Allah should come into my heart. Because only one thing can come. Either it will be a thought away from Allah or it will be the dhikr of Allah. Subhanallah. There cannot be anything else. So all day long, all day long the salik, the student should not think of other things other than Allah. In, in the heart should be just the thought of Allah. That's it. That's it. In the heart should be the thought of Allah. That's it. That's all we have to do. That's all of the two principles. So focus on the heart, always concentrate on the heart, and don't allow any other thoughts to come into the heart. And when we do this, then we are doing dhikr kathira, and nothing will prevent us, restrict us, be a hurdle, a barrier, alhamdulillah. The people, that person becomes a person then who's doing dhikr kathira. And as I said to you, the times, the framework, uh, big barakah, big blessings due to doing it this way. So we need, to, we have learned kalbi dhikr, the dhikr of the heart. So now our job, our action is what? All day long, morning, night, we should practice not just this, that I'm sitting half an hour, I've done dhikr, or 45 minutes, I've done dhikr, or uh, I did dhikr in the morning, or I've done dhikr in the evening. Alhamdulillah, this is a charging of a bat- battery, and this is a way of life and a regular habit. But what do we need to do really is that not a second of the day should pass that I guard my heart, nothing strange or any thinking away from Allah should come to the heart. For example, waswasa, we are all champions, aren't we? MashaAllah, if we look back, then MashaAllah, 
we see that there's dunya behind us, people following us and recognize, may Allah forgive. In other words, we've done hijrah, isn't it? We've left the dunya, we've left the uh, sins and we've come to the place of nur and light. Allah Ta'ala says, يُخْرُجُوا مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُورِ Allah Ta'ala says, take the person out of the darkness and bring him to the light. So this is what we have in it, that we were in darkness and we were lost and we were champions of that darkness. So we don't have to hide anything. But when a person becomes good or pious, then shaitan brings evil thoughts into the person's mind. Oh, you used to do these things. Oh, that woman. Oh, look at this attraction and this and that. So a man then he starts to shake that my dhikr is not strong enough because I'm thinking of um, bad things or evil inclinations or sinful thoughts. I don't think I'm right. Totally, we shouldn't worry about this. This is called waswasa. The waswasa of shaitan thoughts, whispering of injection of shaitani thoughts. And shaitan through waswasa, he takes a person towards loss. Because once a person does tawbah, repents. After repenting, Allah Ta'ala eliminates all of the previous sins, historical sins, except for those sins that are sins we've done against other human beings. We will have to go to those human beings and seek forgiveness. Or for example, if we've got salah, fasting or hajj or zakah that we've not paid or done or implemented, we'll have to make them up. Or if I've backbited or slandered somebody, I'll have to seek that person forgiveness. But the rest of the sins, Allah Ta'ala eliminates. Allah washes them away. Washes them away. So to think that when the shaitan whispers into our ears and minds, oh, I was this before I was a sinner. I'm not good enough. Don't worry about these thoughts. Rather, keep on going through that practice. Get rid of that thought and understand that these thoughts are coming to my mind and I'm not doing zikr at the moment. This is a big point here. That shaitan, he is foolish himself. Shaitan, he makes you realize himself that you have to do zikr. Naqshbandi student, what a beautiful method of Naqshbandi. Silsala. Shaitan, he attacks us and he whispers into our mind he makes us scared I was a sinner I was bad and he starts sweating while he's doing thinking oh I'm bad I did this sin how am I gonna then he diverts that person oh I'm lost I will never be able to be forgiven and then he gives the person the taste of sins he feels the taste of sins so that he can take the root of dhikr out of that person's heart but here the teaching of the next month he teaches is what that we have to take hold of two things focus on the heart and protecting the heart that always we have to do what Protect the heart. So number one, we do dhikr of Allah in the heart. And who is pestering us? Shaitan. So what it means is that when waswasa is coming, then our dhikr, we're not doing dhikr at that time, but we need to go back to dhikr. So suddenly become alert. Oh, shaitan is diverting me. Start doing dhikr again. Start doing dhikr again. Subhanallah. And after some days, alhamdulillah, you will not realize the waswasa of shaitan will go away and the shaitan will run away and say, oh, I'm making him do dhikr. More. He's becoming stronger in his dhikr. Oh, let me, let me forget doing the waswasa to him. Let me stop advising him. So a person will do dhikr. And after doing dhikr, if thoughts come into your mind about dunya, this and that, thousands of thoughts, then consider this is not dhikr I'm doing. A kufi kalbi is gone. And I'm not a salik, correct? I'm not a right, uh, correct murid student. Time I'm wasting in thinking about dunya. I've wasted my time. Astaghfirullah, what have I done? Oh, I should concentrate on my heart. I should concentrate on my heart. So straight away then, turn towards the heart. Thoughts and evil whispers of shaitan will then disappear. And the third thing which is a beautiful impact or result is that insan, the human being due to the father of Allah, he leaves the sins. Leaves the sins. And from which sins? Imagine. Imagine, not from the tongue, from the hands, but the heart, the sins of the heart, the sins that emanate from the heart, the human being, he is then free from those sins. The real effective sins you could say. So because he is concentrating on his or heart. So three things. Number one, that kathir, zikr kathir and kathira, that we have to do zikr in the heart. And kathir, zikr kathir is that continuously we should be focusing and paying attention to our heart. And number two, the thoughts, the whispering of shaitan, we stop them. We guard the heart, we protect the heart as soon as the thoughts come. We should understand that, oh, I'm about to do dhikr. Why are these thoughts coming? Suddenly, you shake yourself, shake yourself down. Don't pay attention to the sins. Rather think that, oh, I've got these thoughts, I'm not doing dhikr. And don't think that, oh, shaitan's going to give me loss. Then straightway, shake yourself down, pull yourself together and start doing dhikr again. And what will happen then? That this dhikr, this remembrance, in this you don't need to close your eyes. You don't need to um, bow your neck. Morning and evening, we've practiced this in Marakba, half an hour, two hours, three hours. So then you continue doing dhikr, your eyes are open, your hands are working, you're in the dunya, but your heart is beating to the name of Allah. And you get such a rhythm that even if you're not paying attention, you're doing work, you're busy, you're writing with your hands, but your heart is beating. Remembering Allah, you're writing something, you're working, or you're talking to somebody. But as soon as you see or think about your heart, it's doing Allah, Allah, Allah. It's beating to Allah's name. Allah, Allah, Allah's father, grace. If it comes, then remember this one. 
one point additional that when Allah's fadl comes to a person and he starts doing dhikr of Allah, he makes struggle, then Allah Ta'ala allows that person to listen with his ears or her ears. The heart speaks. That's just like a child speaks, same way you will hear the heart, Allah, Allah, Allah calling out. So this is the Naqshbandi Silsila, my friends. And this is what we need to make effort for. We need to pay attention to this. Don't waste time, alhamdulillah. And always we need to keep ourselves busy in Allah Ta'ala's dhikr and remembrance. And the rewards for this are very big indeed, very great ibadah. Great ibadah. May Allah Ta'ala give us all the tawfiq. Ameen.